a cigar. You tell Mr. Wojnowski that Al Capone greatly appreciates his thoughtful gift and that I look forward to doing business with him in the future. Thank you. Don't like that in here, Harry. Huh? Try one of these. What's wrong with mine? What's wrong with them? They stink. That's what's wrong with them. Just like your latest figures in the whole running operation. Oh, we're only down 5%. Al, it's a depression. People just aren't getting out and enjoying themselves the way they used to. I want to hear your excuses, Harry. When business is down, you got to promote. That's what you got to do in business. Well, party's ready. <laughs> the chef from the farmer house did a great job catering. And the wine for the auction's all set. Got us a little sample from our friends in Marseille. I'm telling you, Al, these swells ain't going to know what hit them. Hey, Harry. You make sure that your girls are the cream of the crop tonight. Father O'Brien's orphanage is a good cause, and I want to make them a lot of dough. I'll make sure they're the cream of the cream of the crop. You better. Now get out of here. Yeah. I'll try, Al. We'll do our best. Speaking of the Marseille connection, when is the big shipment of wine coming in? Uh, leaves in two days. Ought to be here in a couple of weeks. Something like a fine bottle of French wine to keep the Gold Coast swells happy. Keep them coming to our joints and spending their dough. Salute. Salute. <laughs> Would anyone else like some coffee? I think you're her type, Ellie. <laughs> uh, I won't have any of the scandalous speculation about Mr. Ness. He's a happily married man. Married Malone? Not embalmed. <laughs> Thank you. Benita is a very lovely lady. Uh, that she is. She is an exotic European import. Now that says your cue to brief us on the next operation. What are we talking about? Our French compatriots believe that a freighter carrying fine wine is on its way to Capone. Be a big score, gentlemen. Be hitting Alphonse where it hurts him the most. In the wallet? No. In his ego. Here, here. Beautiful, Mrs. Everett. Thank you. We think so, too. <laughs> you know, someday I'm going to have five, and they're going to be just as cute as he is. <laughs> Are you going to Chicago to meet your fella? No. <laughs> no fella yet. See, actually, I, I lost my job back in Jackson when they closed down the hardware store, so I, I, I thought maybe there'd be something for me here in Big Town. A nice girl like you shouldn't have any trouble. I hope so. Oh, great. Take him off. Can't you stay through the whole holiday, Tony? Why don't you go back after the first? I wish I could. Do you know how much work we had back there? I'm lucky I got off for Christmas. Chicago. God, I wish I could just see the place. Is it really as glamorous as it sounds? Glamorous, I... No, I wouldn't use glamorous to describe it, no. Tony, why don't you take me back with you? I mean, just for a visit. Gina, tell you what. We get Al Capone behind bars, and I send you a first-class ticket, and we celebrate together. From what I've read, that won't be for a very long time. Just don't be surprised if you find me on your doorstep someday. For once, my two children don't fight over who puts the angel on the tree. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Gina. Merry Christmas, Tony. We started St. Mary's Boys Home in 21 with $90. We've come a long, long way. We had just five children then, and we have over 200 now. So naturally, our expenses have risen considerably. <laughs> Mr. Capone, I applaud your kindness for holding this auction for our benefit tonight. Nice. And all of you out there participating, I say this to you. Not only will you be rewarded in the knowledge that you have helped troubled youths become contributing members of our society, 
but also by the good Lord when you stand before the gates of heaven. God bless you. Thank you, Father. Ladies and gentlemen, let's have a big round of applause for Father O'Brien and his most worthy cause. <laughs> gentlemen, it's time for the auction. Our first bottle of wine is a very full-bodied red, shall we say. <laughs> La Tournelle 1903 Vintage. Now, what are we going to start off bidding here, gentlemen? What do you say, Frank? La Tournelle 03? $500, minimum. $500. Gentlemen, let's keep in mind that this is for a charitable cause here. And let's start the bidding off at $1,000. Gentlemen, do I hear $1,000 here? I'm looking for a bid of $1,000. I can't hear you. Gentlemen, gentlemen. What's the matter, fellas? Don't be stingy. This is an irreplaceable bottle of wine we're talking about here, huh? Not to mention the fact that each bottle of wine is accompanied by one of the lovelies from Harry and Alma Guzik's private stock. Come on, fellas. I'm looking for a bid of $1,000. I, I, I will. Mr. Robot bids $1,000. All right, finally somebody coughed up some dough. <laughs> Do I have $1,200, gentlemen? I'm looking for a bid of $1,200. We're looking for a bid of $1,200, gentlemen. $1,200. $1, Mr. Goldblatt bids $1,200. All right, gentlemen, I'm looking for $1,400. Do I have $1,400 here? dollars uh, Oh, $1,400 for Mr. Field. Mr. Field bids $1,400. All right, so here's $1,600. $1,600, gentlemen. $1,600. That's $1,400 to Mr. Field. Going once, going twice, sold to Mr. Field for $1,400. What can I say? <laughs> gentlemen, this is one of the rarest and oldest cognacs in the world. Napoleon Bonaparte himself had this on his table. How about it, Al? Here we were rubbing elbows with the richest men in Chicago, huh? Yeah, the captains of industry. All the commercial and civic leaders in Chicago, we had them all there tonight. All the way from Brooklyn. How much did we raise, Frank? What, net-net? About 112,000. Those swells certainly do like their wine. Yeah, but not one of them went for the sweets. Can't figure it out if they're queer, just a bunch of fancy winos. Yeah, well, maybe it's your girls, Harry. They were a little hard-looking. Maybe society doesn't go for sweets. Maybe they want sweetness. That's what the swells go for. Come on, Hal. Give Harry a break. We did good. You watch. Tomorrow you're gonna get a lot of good press from this thing. You ever been to Chicago before? No. <laughs> I've lived here all my life. It's a nice oh. place. Maybe I can show you the city sometime. Make you feel more at home. I just want a room, please. How will you be paying? In cash. It's three dollars a night. How many nights would you be staying? just checked in over here. She's got that look. Farm fresh. Nobody with her. How old is she? 17. Her name is Gina Pagano. We'll take care of it. Got another one.
he's not gonna hurt you. Yeah. ready, Crack. You can turn around now. What are you saying? We're saying you're in violation of the Volstead Act. You're serving wine, Francois. That's against the law. <laughs> well, a meal without wine is like a day without sunshine. This is Chicago. We have a lot of days without sunshine. And it gets even darker in prison, Francois. However, we're not really interested in the small fry. Now, you help us, and we'll turn a blind eye to you. How can I help you? We understand there's a very large shipment of Old Medoc, saint Emilion, all the very finest French wines en route to Chicago. 500 to 1,000 cases, depending on who you believe. We have reason to think that you might have some information about that shipment. I, I know nothing. I, I am a humble French chef trying to make a living in America. These photos were taken in Marseille. Oh, look, look. There's an American-bound French freighter being loaded. And look, there's your brother, Jacques. What do you know about this shipment? I know nothing. I have not seen my brother for 12 years, uh, since the end of the war. If your beef bourguignon is as good as you say it is, presumably you'd like to go on serving it here in America. Excuse me? The immigration people. I found some discrepancies in your paperwork. You are bluffing. We want to know where, when, and how that shipment is being delivered. There are only five docks Capone might be able to use for a shipment of this size. Unfortunately, we'll have to stake out all five of them. The accommodations vary from lousy to miserable. Hopefully, we won't have to be there for too long. There's field phones at all five locations. We should be able to convene at any one location within 30 minutes. Mr. Malone's worked out the details, Mike. Steelman, you've got the bait and tackle shop here. Great, and every morning the cats will follow me home. Well, from what we understand, the cats follow you home anyway. Pagano, you are at Fenian's Landing, which is here. Oh, great. Can I bring my fishing rod? Trolling for smelt, reeling in Capone, huh? The fish that stinks from the head. Oh, this humor is so mordant. Mr. Robbins, for your delightful wit, go and employ it in the turning basin. The aroma there is unequaled. Oh, yeah. Got it, Chris. Hello? It's your mother. Ma, hi. I've, I've been meaning to call you. I just... I'm sure you have been. You and your sister must be very busy. Gina? I thought you'd at least call to tell me about Gina's new job. What new job, Ma? At 
Marshall Fields. Didn't she call you? She said she was going to look you up uh, the day after she got there. Haven't you heard from her? When did she get here? About two weeks ago. Isn't she with you? I haven't seen her, Ma. Oh, my God. I'm sure she's okay. I, I'm going to call you just as soon as I find her. Tony, I'm frightened. Thanks for taking the time to see me. Save the gratitude. I work vice. What vice? We ran your sister in on a prostitution charge. She made bail. We released her. Prostitution? What are you talking about? She posted. She's probably back on the streets right now. <laughs> you son of a bitch! Don't, Don't you ever let go of my sister! Easy, easy, easy. She's got a whore! Easy, easy. It's all right. It's all right. Let's read the report. Let's read the report. She worked at the Scarlet Lady? If you find her, I'm not sure you're going to want her. But if you want to give it a shot, she's working the red light district down at the levee. have a wonderful time together. What's your name? Uh, Tony. Uh, hold on, I need, I need to talk to you. Oh, I can do that. I'm a real creative. What kind of talk do you want to hear? I, I've never been in a place like this before. I, I requested you because I know you've been around the levee a while and I know that you know a lot of people. I'm looking for someone in particular. Her name is Gina Pagano. Don't recognize her. She worked at the Scarlet Lady. <laughs> they closed that place. So, you like brunettes, huh? She's my sister. She's from Michigan. She came down here, and somehow she's working in your profession. But 
She's not that kind of girl. Not that kind of girl. Just what type of girl works in my profession, huh? I'm sorry, I'm not trying to offend you. I just know Gina. And something makes me think she was kidnapped or forced into Forced? Her. Nobody forces you to do what I do. Do I look chained down? Are there guards at my door? Oh, boy. Well, since you paid to get up here, I'll take the time to explain a few things to you. In case you haven't noticed, we're in a depression. And a girl, no matter how sweet she is, really only has two choices. She can work in a sweatshop somewhere, or she can live like me. <laughs> Do you know how much money I make in this place? No, I don't. Over a hundred dollars a week. And I live in a beautiful apartment. I drive a new Lincoln, and I wear Chanel perfume, and I have a closet full of designer clothes. And you know what? And this may really shock you, Mr. Rube. But I bet your sister is just as smart as I am. Don't go looking for her. If she wants to see you, I'm sure she'll look you up. You're wrong about Gina. I really feel sorry for you. you must come from one hell of a family. hidden with that light on. You're late. I know, I'm sorry. Sorry doesn't cut it, Pagano. We're stretched thin on this one. A man short could mean a man shot. It won't happen again. I'm heading back to my post. If you need someone to talk to, I'm always there. got something worthwhile or are you gonna tell me what a slut she is give me a break will you kid i'm just a guy doing his job and i got two things for you first a little advice if you want to find out something about your sister stop looking like a rube and start dressing the part second is this oh my god gina where did you get these we got them in a raid the work of a man named Crick. What does this mean? It means she's in with the worst scum in Chicago. Once Crick gets his hooks on a girl, he uses them in ways you don't want to imagine. And the only way out is the morgue. You don't have much time, kid. Your operation is down 15% across the board. You don't get it though, you Harry. Just don't get it. You're spending more time sampling your little sweets than looking out for my interest. And that's not healthy. Now I'm letting it go once because of your brother. Now get out of here. Get out of here before I give you a smack right in the face. I 
I'm getting tired of all these degenerates that are bringing down our business. Your brother's a real bonehead, Jake. So he's a bonehead. We're running real short of that high-end supplier. What's the status of the frog shipment? We're about ready to move it out of New York. I called Bill Mayer the day before yesterday. Probably move it tonight. Good. Ladies. Handsome. What'd you have in mind? A little commerce. We can do that. Yeah? For you, to you, or with you? Actually, I was thinking more about what I could do for you. Huh. Yeah. Well, here's the deal. You give us a sabak and uh, leave the driving to us. Do you know Crick? He does magnificent work. He takes beautiful women such as yourselves and preserves them for the ages. You got to be out of your mind. What's the matter? You know him? You don't want to offend him? No. We don't want to end up like one of his girls. Sister? Get in the car, will you? What is this place? good place to talk. Well, the reason I called this meeting is, frankly, I wanted to apologize for the other night. Apologize for what? Being a jerk, Tony. That is it, isn't it? Tony, you're not like most of the guys I run into. You got a real sweetness about you. And not only about your sister. I could see it in your eyes. <laughs> I even kind of read people's auras. You believe in that kind of thing. Anyway, you got me thinking about some things that haven't come up for me in a while. Maybe what I'm trying to say is, I wish I'd had a brother like you come looking for me a few years ago. So, have you gotten anywhere? I found some pictures of Gina, pornographic pictures. A guy named Crick took them. I figure if I can find him, I can get to Gina. I met Crick once. He's the devil. Got weird, and I left. You know where I could find him? He surfaces sometimes. Maybe he travels, I don't know. There is another guy, though. His name is... Tuggle. He sells Crick's photographs. Maybe we can find him. You can help me. I can do some snooping. I'll have him call you if he and I can hook up. You got a number? Yeah.
here looking for me. Toggle? Yeah. Hazel Romney told me you want to meet Harold Crick. That's why I called. Can you meet me in, say, half an hour? No, no, I can't meet you tonight. Oh, come on, pal. You want to meet Crick or not? Where do I meet you? In the alley behind the Blue Mole Inn. Be there in 20 minutes. And, oh yeah, uh, bring a hundred bucks with you, huh? Broker's fee. <laughs> Looks like she's heading towards Finian's Landing. It's Pregano's watch. I'll give him a call. You head over there. Damn it! The hell is Pregano? Pregano dropped the ball. I want him out of the unit. Come on! Pregano's one of us. He's not a turncoat or a shirker. He's a good man. My gut tells me he's gotten into some kind of trouble. So that means that we, every one of us, are going to help him get out of it. Yeah? And what about that shipment of wine we've been staking out for weeks? I guess the swells are going to get their wine after all, Mr. Malone. Maybe they'll invite you to their party. Jumpy. Toggle? Yep. So you know where Crick is? Yep. Where is he? Hundred bucks. All the information you need is right here. I had dirty pictures, eh, pal? Right against the law, pervert. See you around. AC. <laughs> Hast du mich in die Falle gelockt? No, hi, how are you? Just answer me one thing. Did you set me up? What are you talking about? You toggle in the cops. You're trying to get me off the street. You didn't want me to find Crick. Tony, I want you to find Crick. I want you to find your sister. I want you to find her more than anything else in the world. Why? Because I think she was just the way I was. I came to this town looking for work. I got off the bus and a man offered me a ride. He seemed okay. So I went with him. I woke up two days later in a room with a man standing over me. I was tied up. He raped me. Others did too. It went on for a long time and then they turned me out. I did tricks, posed for pictures. I did all kinds of things. Why don't you get away now? Here's why. <laughs> they hook you. They hook you on chunk. <laughs> That's why you can't leave. That's why you stay. Because if you leave, you can't get what you need to live. <laughs> Find your sister, Tony. Maybe, maybe she's not as far gone as I am. Because <laughs> I'm lost forever. <laughs> you're not lost. I'm going to get you out of this. Sure, your pal Burns busted him down at the levee, all right, Malone. But I kicked him. Because you liked him? Or because he paid your personal toll? Because I know what he was after. He was looking for his sister. What? His sister is a prostitute. He's been going crazy looking for her. And he's got a hooker named Hazel Romney helping him find her. We found some photos that tied Gina Bagano to a whoremonger named Crick. 
This crick's no better than an animal. I warned him, but it's his sister. You want some cheap advice? Find your man before he tangles with crick. Tell me where he is. Crick will kill you if you tell me. I'm gonna kill you if you don't. Now, what's it gonna be? The Kenderson Social Club. <laughs> Drop something. I think there's someone here who can. Do you know her name? How about a photo? Sonia. She's busy right now. But when she's available, I'll take you up to room 11. Up to room 11? Mm -hmm. Wait a minute, where are you going? You can't go up there. What are you doing? Quick, you son of a bitch! Sister, I'll kill you! Tony! Go around back. Don't move! I'm gonna kill her! Let her go, Crick.
You have nothing to be ashamed of, baby. You gotta get help. There's doctors that'll help you get better. Don't worry, Ness. Crick had this coming to him for a long time. I wasn't worried about him. I just hope you can pin this to Capone's people, Harry and Al McGuzik. We'll try, but it's not likely. In this racket, money buys loyalty and silence. Honor among thieves. No, just whores and pimps. See ya. over girls. <laughs> I guess Tony still looks at me like I'm his baby sister. So, you think a couple of girls like us could still believe in St. Agnes? It's good to believe in something again. Like your brother Tony. May I have your attention, please? Passengers from bus 23 to Elkhart. Rapids and points north. 